This is literally as rare as it gets. Did you know? Oh, took a little bite. There is literally as little as 250 of these in the wild. Oh. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I really hope the start of your day is incredible. I know mine is gonna be amazing here. And I get asked all the time, Brian, what is your favorite animals? And I always say, I can't pick. You know, I love all animals, but I have just absolutely fallen in love with crocodilians. You know my girl, Salt here, is a beautiful albino alligator. But I'm just obsessed with all alligators, crocodiles, caiman, all of the crocodilians. I think they're truly amazing. And you may remember that I mentioned when I was in Florida that I went to a place called the Dragonwood Conservancy that my buddy Forrest is the vice president of. We're gonna head back up to Orlando. We'll visit Dragonwood Conservancy, a cool crocodile place to see some really rare crocodiles and alligators. Well, I saved that footage for today's vlogs. I hope that you guys are gonna enjoy it because we definitely saw some incredible crocodiles there. Some of the rarest crocodiles on the planet. So I am gonna go ahead and just let you enjoy it and let me know what you guys think. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and spend some time with my girl Salt. So we're at Dragonwood Conservancy Conservancy here. Of course, my buddy Forrest is involved with this, so I am going to put a link in the description to all this stuff. Please show them some love. This is pretty absolutely ridiculous. I'm not even going to lie. There are a lot of amazing crocodilians here. I just walked in a few seconds ago, and I'm already in love. Look at these things. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my I've often said that Cuban crocodiles are really my favorite crocodile. And I never thought that I was going to be somewhere where I would see a whole tub of them. Wait till we go to Cuba. <laughs> when Savannah takes me to Cuba, there's going to be a lot of Cuban crocodiles. But wow, look at how absolutely gorgeous they are. And that's a lot of little babies. Oh my gosh. That, I'm pretty blown away. I didn't expect to see this. Oh my gosh. Again, I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, my good friend Forrest that you guys know well, obviously, is a big part of this. The vice president of the Dragonwood oh, Conservancy. Yeah. See, and there are so many amazing crocodiles. These are just indoor. We're not going to get a chance to see outdoors because it's one o'clock in the morning. I'm not going to lie to you. But uh, Forrest, show me what you have going on here because I'm a little overwhelmed and I don't know my crocodiles like you do. So I'm going to just turn it over to you. Go for it. Yep. So you know how pumped I am for this. I've been waiting for years to be able to finally bring you here. This is a dream come true. I'm so excited. We got Savannah here, Brian Cusco. Yeah, so <laughs> I get to show you guys something that's been a project in my heart for over a decade and really how I came up in the game and, and what drove my love into these rare and endangered species. This is a nonprofit facility. It's not open to the public. We exist for one reason and that's preserving these rare and endangered species in captivity. So already now we've, we're, we're going on our fifth clutch of Cuban crocodiles, three of them being unrelated. We have the most diverse stock of Cuban crocodiles in the United States. No hybrids, nothing like that. So. Obviously, with the Cuban crocodiles being some of the most endangered crocodiles on Earth, we know Savannah's working on that project really heavily as well. That's been one of our main focuses. So here you get to see a brand new clutch, born in September. Wow. Check these little guys out. Uh, their curiosity, like the way they behave with each other, the way they behave with fingers. I just love them so much. Look at these little guys, how cute is that? My favorite crocodile for sure. Unbelievable. That is crazy. Look at it. Just oh beautiful God. yellow. So intelligent. So and not beautiful. afraid. That's yeah. the thing about yeah. Cuban crocodiles. Even when they're this little, like they might be afraid at first, but then when the biggest one turns on you, they all turn on you because they get done. Usually when you talk to croc keepers who have had baby Cubans in the past, that's what they talk about is that just get, keep your fingers out of there because they will literally jump out of the tub and, and nip your fingers. But um, the main keeper here, Brad, he does all the hard work in here. He's training these crocodiles day in and day out. From the day they're born, he's working on behavioral training to, uh, to try to used to, you know, human behavior and what we're doing and our deliberate action. These guys learn and they're intelligent. They know the difference between their keeper and their food and that who, where their food's coming from. And, and so that's a lot of what we do here is, is observe their behavior, learn everything we can about them and try to preserve these for generations to come. 
Certainly one of my favorite of all the Cayman are these guys here. The broad snouted Cayman. They are absolutely incredible. Look at the eyes on these guys. They kind of remind me of Cubans a little bit with the kind of cool patterning on them. But of course they are a Cayman and I absolutely love these dudes. So look at this right here. We've got a Cuban baby from last September that hatched out. So this is from a different clutch. You can see here, these guys are pretty docile. We take these guys to educational programs. Matt and Terry have both put in a ton of work with these guys to where they're used to human interaction and they can handle that stress of being transported to educational programs. We're able to go out there and spread the message of conservation and what we're doing with these animals. This right here is a Siamese crocodile. And these guys are also critically endangered, CITES Appendix 1, extinct in most populations in the wild. A great conservation story though, they're doing great in captivity, we have a pretty good genetic bank of them, they're doing well in zoos and in facilities like this, as well as in the skin trade, there's a pretty big population of them there as well. So, although they were almost pretty much totally wiped out in the wild, we were able to save them in captivity and now we've done some reintroductions with them and we're seeing that succeed in certain areas. And then we've also rediscovered some populations as well. It seems like every year they're finding you know, new populations in Cambodia and Thailand. There's a few small, small areas that have popped up. But the Siamese crocodile is just an incredible animal. And uh, you can tell they put a lot of work into this one because usually these guys are pretty nippy and uh, you couldn't necessarily just handle them like this. So. Pretty cool. Of course, all the crocodilians that we we're looking at were indoors in a kind of baby raise out room, stuff like that. And they actually have five acres of crocodiles outside. But like I had mentioned in the vlog that I was talking about getting there, it was like 1.30 in the morning. It was dark outside. No way you want to go outside into five acres in the dark with a bunch of really crazy crocodiles. So I am excited. We are going to go back to the Dragonwood Conservancy at some point and see all the adult outside crocodiles as well. So this for me is just mind blowing. This is actually Actually, the first time I've got to see this animal as well. This is a Orinoco crocodile. This is literally as rare as it gets. Did you know, oh, took a little bite. So did you know that there is literally as little as 250 of these in the wild? So just stop and think about that for a second. There's only a few clutches away from extinction. This amazing crocodile from the Orinoco River in the Llanos is almost gone. Believe it or not, there's just so many things that makes this crocodile special. It's one of the largest of the crocodilians. It's believed to be at least the third largest. So, you know, behind the saltwater crocodile and the Nile crocodile, these guys are, are recorded at lengths of over 22 feet. So the fact that we're able to work with something like that, where literally there's that few left in the wild, this is extremely important that we get these guys established in captivity. And it's a real honor just to be in the same room as an animal like this. Guys, this is unbelievable. I have never been this close to one of these fours. I'm freaking out. Tell me as much as you can. So this is the black or melanistic form of the African slender snout crocodile, Acetops cataphractus. I've been waiting forever to show you guys. I think this is the most amazing looking crocodile ever. Every time I see it, it just blows me away. Less than 300 of these guys left in the wild. We're doing everything we can to preserve these guys in captivity so that these guys can be around for generations to come. So here at Dragonwood, you guys are actually breeding these ones. We were the first to breed them. We're, we're raising up um, these animals right here to be future breeders as well. Our breeder male that produced these babies is believed to be over 100 years old. What? Is that not right, Brad? Yes. Yes, 100 years old. How amazing is that? I don't even know if you guys understand how of a rare opportunity is to be this close to this animal. Uh, this is literally one of the most incredible, beautiful animals I've ever seen in my entire life. And like I said, please, links in the description, show them some love. Uh, definitely, uh, this, is, this is amazing. And, and listen, we're gonna be back because we wanna see the outside at some point. And there's still a few things we're gonna show you here too, but uh, wow, incredible, absolutely incredible. This is a really treat here, guys. This is one of the most endangered crocodilians out there. Of course, the Chinese alligator. We were one of the first people to go over to China and kind of bridge that cultural gap and form a relationship with them. And these guys are, are pretty much at the point of extinction. I mean, they're genetic bottleneck. There's there's not enough variability in the gene pool, we think, at this point to save these guys. But hey, we're, we're certainly still gonna try. And uh, look how amazing that is. I mean, that thing is untaped, com completely tamed, and uh, yeah, this, they, they, this species is very close to our heart and we are praying that we can get across some of those political boundaries and work with some other facilities to get a male for our females because 
right? Yeah, that's what we need to do is take advantage of every animal in captivity. Oh my gosh, this is a little Siamese crocodile, unbelievably cute. Oh, I could play with these things all night. I mean, it's coming up on two o'clock in the morning and we have to get on a plane in just a handful of hours, so we're gonna probably wrap up pretty soon. But I'm so glad that we came by here. This is absolutely incredible. Oh, <laughs> guys hear that? <laughs> that is some fire! And with that said guys, I think that we are getting out of here and ending this Florida adventure tomorrow morning. Actually, I should say in about two hours, we are boarding a plane and heading back to Michigan, back to the Reptarium, back to BHB, and back to some reality. But what an amazing adventure we had. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite part. Would you like me to do more stuff like this because it was an absolute blast for us? I wish you guys have an absolutely amazing day, evening, when Whenever you happen to be watching, do me a couple of favors before we get out of here. Can you smash that like button? Turn those post notifications on so you know when I upload a video. Make a comment because I love reading about your beautiful faces. Kind to someone and I promise I will see you tomorrow.